must prepare, prepare for the future, what will happen. But when it comes to the spiritual part, there are those here who are probably not prepared. We have not prepared, pre-planned for the future. In, uh, uh, in about 26 days or so, we're going to be celebrating Christmas. Uh, this man, absent from the body, present with the Lord. When you hear that song, I'll be home for Christmas, think of this man. He truly will be home in the presence of the Lord. His spirit, his soul in the presence of the Lord. This body awaits resurrection. This same Lord Jesus, we're going to be celebrating this Christmas. I'll be home for Christmas. Silent night, holy night. We sang at uh, your mother's, your mother's funeral close to 13 years ago. Silent night, holy night. One day shall rise. The body awaits. Jesus says, I go and prepare a place. If I go and prepare a place for you, I will come back again. I will receive you unto myself that where I am, there you may be also. We are a dying people living in a dying world. We must prepare for eternity. Pre-plan, pre-arrange. There are reservations to be made. I accept the gift of eternal life through the gift of Christmas. Jesus the Christ, make your reservations. I'm a sinner. I need salvation. This is the gift of salvation. I have a testimony. I don't exactly know the day or the hour. I know the season it was fall when I gave my heart to the Lord. I was 12 years old. And you'll have a testimony. Some of you may remember the day it was on his birthday. Is that what you were saying, Peter? Yes. And Jesus Christ, the one who says, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. We're talking that spiritual stuff here. That spiritual death. A spiritual separation from God. You shall never die. Do you believe this? Jesus asked Martha. He was talking with the two sisters. And he says to Martha, do you believe this? He's asking you today, do you believe this? This is Jesus talking. Do you believe this? I am the resurrection and the life. Have you received this life? I shared this on Monday, a little, little fellow. He was afraid of heights. And he was told that he's going to be going to visit up on the CN Tower. He says, I'm afraid. I heard, I heard the people talking. And this, 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 my old grandma was saying that uh, it reaches up into the heavens. And when they got to the CN Tower, he was a little bit nervous, but he held his daddy's hand. And as the elevator was going up so fast, he turns to his daddy and he says, Daddy, does God know we're coming? <laughs> and I just trust that each one here can say, yes, God knows when his child is coming home. Are you one of his children? You're coming home. One day, I trust that you have put your trust in Jesus Christ. And you have made that reservation, that pre-planned. We're talking about pre-planned, pre-planned funerals, pre-arranged funerals. How about the pre-plan of your eternal destiny? Then you can sing. There's a popular song. Oh, even the non-believers sing it. <laughs> what a friend we have in Jesus. Why don't you, why don't you uh, change that from we to I? What a friend I have in Jesus, all my sins and griefs to bear. In his arms he'll take and shield me. I will find a solace there. That separates us for a time. But Christ will reunite us for eternity. Praise the Lord.
Welcome back to uh, my interview with uh, Walter Cahood. We have just spent uh, a, a good considerable amount of time getting Walter's uh, uh, history from Rosa River, uh, his family, his travels to uh, Vancouver, Los Angeles. Uh, we just ended off there as we ran out of uh, room on our memory card on our digital uh, camera here. So we're just going to pick up from Walter being in uh, Nashville, Tennessee, and how he makes his transition to Toronto. And that is the next part of our interview. So, Walter, welcome back. Take us from uh, uh, Nashville as we uh, stop there. And uh, you've been riding that bus. You're in Nashville, and uh, you're off to Toronto. But uh, you want to fill in quickly on what happened in Nashville there and your roots in gospel music and country and western and what happened there. And take us to coming to Toronto and when you came to Toronto. Thank you, Peter. Uh, while I was in Nashville, uh, the bus people was right downtown. And uh, when I got off the bus, I looked around. This is where, where are the hotels? And uh, within two blocks of the bus depot, I found a hotel. I booked that for several days. And I noticed uh, Opry House. This is the old Ryman Auditorium, old church. It's likewise uh, about a block away from where I'm staying. Finally made it there a couple of years ago, so... Yes, to the, to the old on one. Now it's, uh, you've got the Opry Land is the, is the big... Stood on the stage, right. microphone, yes. and yes, good stuff. I used to listen. We used to get the station WLS, WSM from Nashville, Tennessee in Manitoba, especially on Saturday night, late at night. Uh, we would get the radio station uh, on the car radios in Manitoba when we were kids and, and, and teenagers growing up. And we used to listen to the Grand Ole Opry. This is our hero who's singing that. And it was quite a privilege for me to uh, go for a walk. Uh, I, I recall it was, I, I arrived there on a Wednesday, and I uh, found out that on a Friday, they have the Friday night opera. I, I was aware of the Saturday night opera as the big one, but this was called the Friday night opera, and the, the same stars appear on Friday night. And uh, when you buy your ticket, uh, there were no reserved seats. There were the church pews, and, and uh, they were numbered, but uh, you just sat any place. And uh, I said, oh, okay, you can sit any place. I ended up sitting right on the front, front bench or the front pew and uh, watching uh, all these performers on the stage right on front of me. Uh, it was like, uh, like a kid, a dream come true. Uh, listening to these uh, on the radio and here it was broadcast live and you're, you're at one of these uh, uh, concerts. Uh, so uh, uh, I uh, really felt, felt great. I, I felt so honored. I said, so what next? Am I going to Buckingham Palace and, 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 and uh, visit the Queen, maybe? Chevrolet Classic, they're my classic cars. 
today. And they, they came with this brand new car, and I said, wow, this is from Ontario, that must be a rich province. I want to go there. So that, that, that kind of inspired me to come to Ontario, the richest province at that time in, uh, in Canada. I don't know if Alberta and, and uh, Ontario are tied or what, but uh, at that time. When I came uh, from Nashville I, by bus, I uh, checked out uh, newspapers I, in the States. I would buy in the United States. I would buy the newspapers. I could go and buy a Toronto newspaper. And I bought a Toronto newspaper in Nashville, and I, and I looked at some of the uh, addresses of hotels. And you could get a hotel room, $3 a night, Peter. $3 a night. Uh, this is near Allen Gardens up on, on, on uh, Carlton Street. Uh, I wrote down the addresses and I arrived, uh, it was in March, March uh, 17 or 18 uh, of 1968 uh, at the bus depot at 6 o'clock in the morning and the guitar is on my back because you can't hide that and I, I got off at the bus depot at 6 o'clock in the morning I, I got off at the bus depot at 6 o'clock in the morning and some fellow, young fellow from uh, the East Coast and he, he looks at me and sees the guitar and he, he loves to play the guitar. He says, hey, the guitar, can I play your guitar? So I hung around with this fellow. I, I put my suitcases um, in, in the storage at the bus depot and we hung around, uh, out and around the bus depot there and he would play the guitar and uh, uh, we would take a walk. Well, before that, before, uh, before I uh, met this guy, I walked from the bus depot on Bay Street and down that onto Young Street. And I didn't, well, I heard about, there, was a, there are subways in Toronto. And I asked the police officer on Young Street, I says, uh, where is Carlton Street? I'm at Dundas. And he pointed north. My directions were all mixed up when I arrived in Toronto. Uh, to me it seemed like uh, south is north, it was just the opposite, you know. And he pointed, he says, it's just uh, up this way, uh, uh, several blocks. Uh, but, he says, you can take the subway. I figure, I'm lost up here, why would you want to send me down to a subway? I've never been on a subway. I uh, never saw a streetcar. Uh, well, I did in Winnipeg, when they had streetcars when I was six years old, seven years old. But anyway, uh, so I walked to, uh, to Carlton College and walked near Allen Gardens Park and I saw these old old hotels. They were probably three or four stories. And uh, I went inside. I, I arrived with uh, $26 cash in my pocket in Toronto. Uh, I had a little bank account in Vancouver, so but I, I don't want to talk about the amount of money I had over there, but this is what I arrived with cash in the pocket. So what would you have left in your pocket today after all the market crash? You're, you're, right, you're right, you're right. You're right. You're right. You're right. <laughs> Market spot time. And uh, so I took a room, uh, that must have been, uh, I forget what day, but anyways, I took, uh, took for three three days. And there was no Ukrainian family that you were I aiming to come and stay No, I didn't, just didn't really know anybody. Uh, although uh, my mom's aunt lives in, uh, lived here at the time. And I knew some people from the Ukrainian Baptist Church, from this church, Kutsenko. Uh, actually, the parents of uh, Eugene Kutsenko. He used to live in Winnipeg for a while. His daughter is there, Mrs. Podvornia. And uh, he used to come to preach in Rosa River. Him and his wife used to come. I'm bouncing back to Rosa River again as a kid. Uh, when, when the wife, uh, Mrs. Kutsanko and Mr. Kutsanko, would come to Rosa River for the weekend sometimes to preach. 
they would let my mom know ahead of time for health reasons. My wife does, uh, or my wife doesn't eat anything with salt, and I don't eat anything with sugar. And my mom would grab herself by the head and says, "What do I feed these people?" <laughs> and when they would arrive, they'd say, "Don't worry. When we're out here, we can stray or or sin by eating whatever you place on the table." So that made it a little easier for my mom. But those are only people I were, was aware that are here. Uh, As Eugene's parents? Eugene's parents. They, uh, in fact, when, when they were here, they, they lived at Mrs. Lutzik's, Zina Lutzik's uh, uh, place. And uh, Fadio, Fadio mm-hmm. Lutzik, uh, on the rock at, uh, uh, here in Toronto. I also knew Nick Bridge from Toronto, who was a pastor in the Winnipeg Ukrainian Evangelical Baptist Church. He used to also come out to preach in Rose River. He was a young, single man, and we looked at him. He, he loved to drive cars really fast. And, you know, he was a wild driver. And uh, we loved that, and those kind of people as kids growing up. He was very educated. But he, uh, I knew he came from Toronto. I didn't know he had brothers here. In, uh, in Ukraine or English he was preaching? He was preaching in Ukraine, yeah. I never heard him. Well, for, for I've heard him preach in English, but I'm sure I did. But it was always in Ukrainian. In, in Ukrainian, uh, because we would go to the Mennonite church for the for, for the English. Our Ukrainian uh, church, uh, Baptist church in Rosario, was in Ukrainian in those days. Today's English. So, anyways, uh, I got a, a hotel room there for uh, three nights, and then I figured, well, I, I will find a room to rent someplace. And uh, then I came walking back to the bus depot. That's where this fellow from the east uh, east coast, a uh, young fellow my age, he says, hey, guitar. So he, he says, can I play? So he, he played the guitar. So we hung around um, probably half a half a day uh, around Allen Gardens. Playing, playing, he was playing the guitar and we would sing. And then others, his friends would, would, would join us. Uh, and, and there were a lot of men today who were hanging around there with the bottles. And and there, there, there were some bottles there. Back in back, 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 back. And uh, so that was my start. After uh, wh- while I had the room there, there was no heat in that hotel. This is March, and it's a good thing. The, uh, the fellows were saying it was 55 degrees Fahrenheit when I arrived in Toronto. No winter clothes. Uh, I had sort of like trench coat, suede boots, you know, with zippers on them, uh, Los Angeles style, very very cool. And uh, uh, I looked for for a room to rent, and I found a room on Bathurst. Right near Dundas, right across from Alexandra Park, there's a swimming, uh, skating rink, uh, community, uh, center. community yeah. center there. Right across on Bathurst, 316 uh, Bathurst uh, Street. Now the hospital was there too. And, and the hospital, hospital is uh, south. North. North, uh, north I, 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 corner, so yes. further up. I'm south. I'm south. What number? Three, 316. Yeah. I'm south of, of Dundas on, on Bathurst, uh, uh, about uh, several buildings. There was a big... Uh, I believe it was Hillary's uh, yes, drugstore, the pharmacy, pharmacy they sell all kind of exotic uh, medicines and uh, European medicines there too and uh, stuff like that. Anyways, uh, I, I took the smallest room in the house, which was $9 a week. By this time, I had uh, gone to the bank and I had uh, transferred some of the money from uh, the Vancouver Bank over to the Toronto Bank. And so, hey, I can coast a little bit here, you know. Uh, uh, it just happens to be that uh, I noticed the name of the landlady was Kolchinsky. And I say, are you uh, Russian or Polish? And she says, no, we are Ukrainian. So the, you know, they were like a mother and father to me. Uh, Helen and I forget his name. That was, their, that was both of their second marriage. Uh, their uh, previous spouses uh, passed away. In fact, they met at the cemetery. She went there to place flowers uh, on her husband's grave, and he went to uh, clean up his wife's uh, wife's uh, tombstone or something like that. And they, they met at the cemetery, and here, here they are, husband and wife. And they didn't live at the place, but they would come once once a week to clean up. And uh, while I was living in Toronto, uh, I started attending uh, Evangel Temple. This was an old church right on the corner of Bond Street and Dundas, because I'm not far from the bus people in the area where I arrived. And walking by, that kind of reminded me of uh, Angeles Temple in uh, Los Angeles. 
And I said, this is the church that God wants me to attend. Uh, I was kind of hanging with the Pentecostal side. And, uh, and the Calvary Temple in Winnipeg. Calvary Temple in Winnipeg, and in, in Vancouver, a four square gospel um, um, tabernacle, uh, I guess, uh, living something tabernacle. Evangelistic tabernacle on Fraser Street uh, and, and the King's Way on the, in, in uh, Vancouver. And uh, here, I'm walking by, I says, as if the Lord's saying, you're going to come to this, this temple, Evangel Temple. And that's where I started attending. And that's where I rededicated my life to the Lord. Evangel Temple. Uh, there were special meetings uh, taking place. Uh, and I rededicated myself to the Lord. I'm getting serious. Uh, you know, the Lord called me when I was young. I, I always had a desire. Uh, I always hungered and thirsted after, after righteousness. I always wanted to be pure in heart. Uh, difficult, uh, difficult getting there on your own. And uh, all of a sudden, uh, uh, Evangel Temple here in Vancouver. I went and I prayed, and, and it just uh, got serious, serious with the Lord. Uh, while, while living in Toronto for a couple months, uh, this is coming to, uh, to July, August. I, I went home to Manitoba in June, kept my room uh, for about a month. This was my parents' 25th uh, wedding anniversary. In fact, uh, I believe there's a picture in my dad's uh, book there. Uh, it was actually uh, their 25th wedding anniversary uh, where um, my brother Adam from Vancouver connected, I connected from uh, Toronto, and it was a surprise right on the first page. And uh, yes. this one right here. Okay. June 14, 64. No, that's not yet. Oh, that was a... Uh, there, there, it might be at the back. But anyways, this is where, uh, uh, where we connected right on the back page. There's a few here. Maybe it's missing. Okay, okay. It's, it's not in here. Okay, it might be here in, in the other one. This one here. So anyways, uh, I kept my room and uh, everybody would be asking uh, when I ca came back to Manitoba, I says, and what are you doing? What are you doing in uh, Toronto? And I says, well, well, you know, I, I wasn't working, you understand. And I, I couldn't, couldn't tell what I'm doing, you know. Uh, This is it, yeah. This is uh, the, the 25th. 25th wedding anniversary in 1968. Okay. Uh, and uh, so uh, stayed in Manitoba for a month. Then I came back, came back to Toronto. Uh, but while I was here, Mom would write letters to me. Now, Dad would write the letters to Wally P. Custer in Los Angeles. Dad would always sign your father at the end, you know, not like to love you or anything. We, we were not a, a, a touchy, huggy, kissy family, you know, uh, not with, uh, with, uh, with dad and the guys. But he would sign, your father, John P. Cahoot, you know. I said, man, this is serious stuff. You know? And he would kind of scold me, says, what are you doing in Los Angeles? You know, you don't have medical insurance. What if you got sick? You know, well, a young fellow doesn't think of those things. and don't get sick. So anyway, can you just clear up the name? Your father is H O O T. Yours is H U T. Your brothers are H U T. So what's my older brother is O O T, and my youngest, my youngest sister is O O T. The thing is, my dad is actually K O H U T. Now the next town, just north of Rosa River, is called Rosa, and there was a fellow who, John Kuhut who had a store uh, there, John Kuhut, and now you've got John Kuhut mm. spelled properly. U-T, K-O-H-U-T, in Rosa River, uh, has a store. Uh, there was uh, mail problems and stuff like this. The Kuhuts, my dad, I believe, on his own. He did not change it legally, but uh, when he started registering uh, uh, my youngest sister, when she was born as uh, U-T, I believe, even uh, Eileen, uh, Elsie is uh, O-O-T, uh, Eileen is O-O-T, and Roman just kept O-O-T. His birth certificate might say UT, which is the which is the uh, problem. I was OOT through school in Vancouver. I was OOT. So your birth certificate has birth certificate is UT. So when I was traveling to the United States to so live, you can always work with two different people and never get caught. By well, the social insurance <laughs> social insurance was OOT okay. from Winnipeg. 
But when I was traveling, to, going to live in Los Angeles, I recall at the, at the Bellingham, uh, is it Bellingham? Uh, the, the border crossing, Vancouver, uh, British Columbia, and Washington. Uh, all of us took our baggage out and said, you'll pass the inspector here. And uh, then you show your pa papers. I had two, two items, uh, two papers to show him. I did not have a driver's license. I had my social insurance number and the large birth certificate, the original. I still have that, the original. It's a big paper like that. And I placed them on the counter. And the fellow picked up my social insurance card, and he looks, and I, uh, I says, I, maybe I should explain this. This is OOT, and this is UT. And he looks at this, and he looks at that, and he goes like this, and like this, and he says, everything seems to be in order here. And I says, Walter, good thing you kept your mouth shut. <laughs> you know, uh, because he was trying to explain this, all of a sudden they signed you back, and this is my heart desire was to live in California. And uh, when he asked me, uh, how long are you going for? I said, so, maybe two weeks. And then uh, and later on he asked me again, and how long did you say you will stay? I said, maybe two months. You know, and I said, ah, what's going on here? You know, uh, but then anyway, he let me through and I, I, I stayed for uh, several months in Los Angeles. So you're in Toronto and you're back to Winnipeg and your dad's asking you the letters, what are you doing there? Yeah, and doing. you're visiting 25th anniversary and now you're... I, I'm, uh, I'm coming back. Uh, in other words, there's still that magnet, this is home. Even right now, there's a magnet pulling you, Manitoba, this is the place of my birth. And uh, so uh, on the way back, I, on that Greyhound bus, uh, you know, I, 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 I didn't know if I'm doing the right thing, but something says, Walter, this is like you're breaking ties with, uh, with uh, your past. This is your, your, your birthplace. This is, this is, these are your roots. I slept almost all the way, some 38 hours, whatever it takes by bus. Uh, I had the back uh, bank in the bus, actually, so I could really sleep there. There weren't too many passengers. And, and while you're sleeping on the bus, just so that people know, you hear some noise in the background, and one of the favorite things here, not for me, but yep. there are pigeons that actually build their nests on the windowsill here. There's two right there. So if you hear some flapping, uh, it's not someone trying to get into the church. Yep. It's actually the pigeon's feathers hitting the glass window, and we always looked at that while we're sitting in this church. Yes, so that's been going on for over 30 years. All windows, so all three of them there. So yes. You're sleeping on the back of the bus there. And yes, and uh, as I, uh, when I got near, uh, near Toronto, I felt refreshed, refreshed. And uh, it's as if, uh, it's, it's that homesick for Manitoba, and all of a sudden it says, no, this is home now. It's, it's, it's as if a voice is saying, this is home. Uh, Toronto is home. And uh, while I'm uh, here in, uh, in Toronto, uh, my mother would write me. My dad wouldn't write to... Uh, my dad was... Uh, I think he was getting sick with his kidney problems. But anyways, mom would write and mom would say, Walter, there is a Ukrainian Baptist church in Toronto. God has a girl for you in that church. I said, oh yeah, Mom. I, I, I would go for walks since I lived in the area of this church. I didn't know about this church. This is off Queen Street, you see. You're a block off. A block uh, west and a block south, you see, of Bathurst and Queen. I would walk on uh, Bathurst, go for walks towards Honest Kids and Bloor, that, that area. I would walk past the church. And that's, I could see this is Ukrainian, the Ukrainian Pentecostal church uh, there. But I think I don't know anybody there. But then... Uh, one day, I was going for a walk uh, right here near uh, Bathurst, near this church, a block away. And, you, and before you go there, do you know where you lived on Bathurst Street, across yes. the park? Yes. Our first pastor, Pastor Coopin, yes, held open-door services right in the park there. I heard about that, and there's pictures of that in his book. So that would have happened probably in the early 50s, yes. but way before your time. Yes. I'm not sure yes. if they continue, but yes. maybe one night you would have heard that if they were still there. If they were still there, there. yes. Uh, I hear that uh, there was some persecution uh, yes. taking place by other Ukrainians. Well, there's a fence in the picture, and there's two sides of the picture. One of Reverend Kubrin preaching to the people, okay. and the other one showing him. So I'm wondering uh, why there was a fence. Yes, yes. Yeah. Oh, some I'll kind find, of barricade. I'll find that out later. Yes. But the, you're, you're I've heard stories. You're going for a walk here, and you're coming across. And I'm coming, and, and, and as if, uh, well, uh, something directed me to make a, a turn onto Tecumseh. Uh, I think there was somebody following me. I just wanted to make sure this person is not following me. This is in a, in, on a Saturday, I would say, afternoon, about 7.30, summertime, uh, end of July. 
And so I decided, okay, I'm going to just make a left turn here on uh, Tecumseh off, off Queen Street. And so that person kept going. You know, some looked like gangsters or something. And uh, as I walked, and I stopped, just past the Salvation Army here, and I stopped, I don't know why I stopped, and then I looked up. And across the street, I'm on the other side of the street, I see this sign, Ukrainian Evangelical Baptist Church. Which is still here today. That sign is still back. We put some pictures back. Uh, just um, at the back of the church by the parking lot. And I says, this is what my mother is talking about. <laughs> the Lord has, has a girl for you in that church. So I says, uh, Maybe I'll go, you know, the next day, tomorrow, to this church. I did it. I went back to Evangel Temple. I said, maybe the next Sunday. And I, I, I uh, built up enough courage. I will go to the Ukrainian Baptist Church. And I saw to notice the sign there that uh, at 10 o'clock is uh, what Sunday's called. Nidiyun Ashkol. And 11 o'clock was the service. I came for 11 o'clock. And I recall walking into the church and uh, being asked my name by a gentleman, Walter we're gonna, Scott. We're going to stop right there and take a little break and just slice up this digital okay. portion of it it's and take it right from when you walk into the doors of the church and continue with our next segment of the interview. So we're going to break here and just uh, take a little break and move on to the next segment of Walter coming into the doors of these church and who we met. Thank you. Thank you.